Hi everybody, happy Tuesday and welcome to the Aftershocks of After Loss. I am Rachel Donnelly and this evening I am so because I think she's about to join. Hi. Hello, hello. How, how are you? Doing very well, thank you. And yourself? Good. I hope you're doing well, better than the last time we talked when you didn't have any power. <laughs> well, <laughs> now, I have a whole nother rainfall and all other issues again, but you know what? Oh. I have power, so. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, thank God. <laughs> exactly. Thank God for small exactly. blessings. Well, exactly. I'm so, so psyched that you're here and just so excited to talk with you. Um, and just wanted you to take them. I was going to introduce you, but I think it'd be great if, if you introduced yourself. Sure. So I'm Elizabeth Meyer Kransky. I'm co-founder of Farewelling. I'm also a funeral director, a death doula, a thanatologist, and the author of Good Morning, um, which is a memoir from working in the funeral industry. Okay, there's so much <laughs> to unpack there. <laughs> like, where do we start? And, you know, I loved when, when you and I talked the other day, and then when you sent me some more information, I loved how just honest you were about how obsessed you yes. are about, about this industry, which, you know, may seem odd to some others, mm -hmm. but to you and me, it's totally normal. So when did that obsession start? So I actually, um, unfortunately, and I'm sure I, a lot of your listeners can relate, mm -hmm. I lost my parent, I lost my dad when I was young, I was 21 at the time. And I went to my first kind of planning my first big funeral, I had yeah. lost my grandmother before, but that was a little easier because it was yeah more normal and the way you know life happens right right um this was hard for me yeah and dad was young he was 65 at the time oh no sorry he was 60 at the time oh wow okay. um yeah. I was 21 and we wanted I wanted to plan something fun I wanted something right that was worthy of him yeah and long story of what I did but afterwards people came up to me at the after party and <laughs> every yeah. funeral should have an after party. Yeah. I'm sorry, that should be a requirement. <laughs> yes. Um, and people came up to me and said, you know, God forbid something were to happen to me, will you plan my funeral? Oh my God. And so I actually went home and said to my mom, you know, I found my silver lining. Right. Uh, this all happened so that I could become a funeral planner. Yeah. And she responded with appropriately over my dead body. <laughs> Um, well, yeah, mom's still here. Yay. Thank goodness. Um, touch wood. Um, mom's still here, but I, you know, I, I was, went back to college. I graduated and thought through other things that had interest to me before. Nothing, nothing worked. Right. Um, I even at one point went to business school thinking maybe I could step away from the field. Maybe right. I could do something else and instead wrote my dissertation on the industry and only dove in further afterwards. So It just chose you. And, you know, it's, it's unfortunate that, you know, what led you to it or many of the things that, that inspired you. But, you know, I, you know, I have a lot of the same experiences and you, I think it's great to use this as fuel um, to launch us into our passions and what's meaningful to us. And I think why we do something is just as important, if not more important than what we do. So I think it's a calling. I always yeah. say that, you know, if it's, if you're here and you're, you, you know, you're totally into it, it's a calling. Yeah. I also think, you know, in some ways we're awoken and, it's difficult to do anything else. You know, once right. you're fixated on one of the most important things in life, mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to look at trivial things and it's hard yeah. to spend your day thinking about anything else. Yeah. And yeah. that's just sort of how I feel yeah. about it is that it is all encompassing and there's so many areas that you could focus on. Yeah. That I feel like I've just kind of started to peel away the skin. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, and I also, you know, loved how you and I were talking about how there's this stereotypical or perceived look 
that people in the death industry have or people who are, you know, they're goth or they're, they mm -hmm. got bl black hair and, you know, dark makeup and, yeah. you know, we're just adding a totally different spin to this. <laughs> Absolutely. I think what's so important, and I know that for many years, you know, I started when I was 23 in this industry. So ever, and by the way, you guys can't tell on screen, maybe you can. I'm really short. I am, <laughs> I'm literally like on a good day, I'm five two. Okay. And so <laughs> I think everyone kind of, because I was small, people were not afraid of me. Yeah. And I think when you picture walking into a funeral home, you expect a imposing larger man. Yeah. Um, you know, from all the TV shows, you expect them to be creepy. They're typically not. But, exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, dark think, features. Dark. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Um, but I think because I look the way I do, and obviously, you know, you don't want to judge people on looks, but because I look the way I do, I'm not intimidating. Right. And I think that's yeah, it's awesome. just I can't be intimidating, I'm too small. Um, <laughs> and much my dismay sometimes. Um, but I think that what that's done is it's opened the doors for people to ask questions, right? And to be less scared of it. And I think yeah. as you know, more and obviously, there are more women entering the industry, right? And as we feel that we don't have to conform, right? To either the all black suits. I mean, yeah. first of all, like this is me stepping out of the box and wearing navy blue. Um, <laughs> I love black. I absolutely, I always have. I was like the little third grader who loved oh pink and black. God. Like, um, but but you don't have to. Um, right. And even my black is you know brightened up with shawls or whatnot. And I think yeah. as we say, you know what, this doesn't have to be scary. Right, right. Yeah. Um, it just makes it easier for everyone. It's sad. Yeah. Death is yeah. sad. Death is, yes, it is. Yeah. There's, there's no way to go about that. Right. There's no way right. to sit here and say, I'm going to make it a great experience for you. No. Right. It's, no, it's no. terrible. Yeah. It's terrible. It it's is. Terrible. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think as you and I say, you know, if we can make it easier, if we can make it better. Right. Um, or a little bit better or a little yeah. bit easier or shorten right. the process or, you know, just, just cut down a couple of steps mm -hmm. or give you time to focus on you and to focus on how terrible this is, right? you know, and to focus on the grief, not on anything else that you don't want to, or don't have to do with. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's the most important part. Well, and, you know, I, I think that it just, you know, just shows that everybody's, you know, um, grief is different, just like everybody who works in the industry is, is different. And, and I think like you were talking about, um, you know, the way you, you just brought a whole fresh new approach and just a different perspective and, um, in, in the death care industry. And, you know, no one was expecting for you, little five to you, um, to be someone who was obsessed with the funeral and the death industry. But so after you're sort of, you know, you figured out your calling, what, what happened after that? So you started, you know, working in the funeral home and... Yeah. So I took a job as a receptionist at a funeral home. Um, okay. That was the entry level job that was available. Right. And I sort of worked my way up and I'm so grateful that I started there because I didn't know the industry. I didn't right. know what I was doing. And I, you know, I'm a big believer in start at the bottom, learn from the bottom up. Right. And so I'm, I'm beyond grateful that I was able to do that and, um, so then I went into business school and I learned about the industry larger. I got my funeral director's license. I became a thanatologist, which is the study of death, dying, and bereavement. Okay. Um, I think I think that that's something that not many people know about. I don't think a lot of people know about yeah. it. It's actually, it's, it's a really interesting philosophy and way of learning about the field. Um, okay. that I do think is great for funeral directors too. Okay. So um, not everybody who's a funeral, funeral director is no. automatically a thanatologist. It's, no. it's something that you go above and beyond. Yeah. So do. I, I think it, it's more of a psychology type of thing. Right. 
Okay. Um, it focuses on bereavement, but what is really, I think, important about it is it also focuses on the self-care of funeral directors as well and okay. of caregivers. Um, so I think that's something that gets lost in our field a lot, which yes. is yeah. you know, taking care of each other, taking care of the caregivers, you know, caregiver burnout is real and having yeah. some sort of a respite is so important. Well, um, I'm sure that people don't think or expect that funeral directors are like, they're going to be affected by their everyday mm -hmm. work. They just think that, oh, this is just the way they are. This is their personality. This is, and they're okay with it. And that is not the truth. Mm -hmm. That's not the reality. Not, um, yeah. So I love that you're, okay shining light on that mm -hmm. and that there is a philosophy that helps yeah it helps me also I think it's also interesting to learn about grief and to learn that you know different societies different cultures different people just grieve differently right and to understand that my grief is not your grief correct yeah. You know, and to not impose my thoughts on the process mm -hmm. on you or anyone mm -hmm. else is so important. Mm -hmm. um, so that opened up my mind a lot. And then I also became a death doula. Okay. Um, which, which I, I feel like is becoming a lot more well known. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, there have been books people are sending me now. They're like, is this what you do? And yeah, <laughs> there was recently a book, I forgot which one, which mainstream, it was Leanne Moriarty wrote a book that had a death doula and everybody was like, is this what you do? And I was like, no, but thank you for thinking of me. But... I mean, isn't it amazing that there is something that your answer is no, that's not what I do. But I, I think I just, I love that this industry is becoming that. Yes. I love that we're opening up. I love that we're, you know, following healthcare and bringing doulas in and, you know, telling people that it's okay to do it the way you want to. Yes. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yes. I, I love yeah. that. Um, so when, when were you led to write your book? So I wrote my book. Um, I really, really, what was so important to me and still is, but at the time was so important was to remove the taboo. Yes. And to have people talking mm -hmm. and to get people not only you know, talking about funerals and the funeral industry, but thinking about their own mortality in a practical way. Right. Um, and I, I don't suggest to everyone that every day you sit and just focus on grief. I'm doing that for you guys. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Um, but I do think it's so important to have your thoughts. You know, everyone comes up to me and says, oh, I, I don't have a plan. But, and then there's something. You know, so I do think everyone has some idea and I really wanted to open up the conversation. I wanted it to be common, you know, banter between families is what right. we want. That when that time comes, either it's written down mm -hmm. um, and not kept in your will because then it's too late, but written mm -hmm. down and kept in a safe place, or your family knows what you want. Yeah. You yeah. know? And so my one of my big reasons for writing the book was to say, hey, I'm your average person, you know, I, yeah, I, yeah. I wasn't born into this. I wasn't, you know, I'm not a third generation funeral director. Right. I'm just someone who's grieving yes. and who can say it would have been really nice if my dad left me some plans. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I know you feel the same way. <laughs> ab, I mean, yes. And, you know, despite, all you know, all everything that we've learned over the past year, and even there, even though there was a resurgence, or um, a, a lot of end of life and estate planning that was COVID induced, you know, a lot mm -hmm. of people it caused mm -hmm. a lot of people to really take a hard look at their end of life or estate plans, and and really you know take take a hard look and, and uh, involve some professionals and get a couple mm -hmm. of things done. However, the reality is that half of Americans still don't have a will. And, and I'm like, oh gosh, that was our moment. You know, people have said to be, oh, death was having a moment. And I'm like, okay, yes, we want the country to heal and get back to normal. But then I don't want people to forget and lose sight of, of what inspired so many to take action. 
uh, last year. And just this past weekend, I was with one of my best friends and she was telling me she was with her aunt and uncle over the weekend. And she was talking to them about, you know, her dad just died. And she was like, you know, you guys need to get your stuff in order. And they were like, we don't even want to talk about it. We don't have, we don't have a will. Our kids are smart enough. They'll figure it out. And she was just infuriated when she came to me and she was like, what do I say to them? What would you say to them? I would head to our website, Farewell. <laughs> uh, we have a whole list of how to have that conversation. Yeah. So I actually, I think one of the things we learned in thaumatology is that it's actually the old, typically it's the older generation that says, you know, I don't want to talk to the younger ones because I don't want to trouble them. Meanwhile, yeah. the younger generation would love to have this information. Yeah. Um, I think it's really hard. I would start at the start and say, you know, to whomever is going to be responsible for that funeral, right. you've got to go to them. And I personally went to my mom and said, I, you know, I, I have a lot of regrets with my dad's. You know, I yeah. did his the way I thought at the moment was best. But yes, this thing. cookie cutter, one size fits all traditional, you know, especially in the South, like traditional right. funeral, burial, all right. the things. So. Right. But here's the thing is I'll always regret decisions I made solely because I don't know the answer. Yeah. Right. I could, I went one way. I made that decision. Yeah. I could convince myself to go the other way. Absolutely. And, I, and to this day, I'll, I, and I will never know. And so I just sort of said to my mom, Take that burden away from me. Yeah. Let me know what you want so I don't have to make those decisions. Yeah. And actually, because of COVID, so I, I tell people this story because I, I remember I'm like, oh, I talk to my mom about death all the time. It's totally mm -hmm. fine. Mm -hmm. And I play it like I'm very cool with it. Um, <laughs> and then, well, you are. I mean, let's I, be honest. I so, am. Yeah. But then COVID hit and my mom's, you know, on the old older side and she calls me to her apartment and she has little baggies and they're all labeled. All right, mom, what's this? And she said, well, I might not survive this. And so I've labeled all my jewelry wow. and I need you to know where I'm putting everything. And here's where this is. And she goes, sorry. And I'm, you know, bowling. Yeah. And she says, Lizzie, this is what you taught me to do. Oh my gosh. Like, and Right through the heart, You're right like, oh. through the heart. And so, on the one hand, I was, you know, so upset by this idea. On the other hand, it really clicked that this is actually really wonderful. Yeah. You know, obviously, I, I pray that I won't need to use this. Yeah. But if I do, how great is it that there's, you know, every person she loved um, had their bags, and she thought through the pieces, and they were meaningful and. You know, there were notes with why. Um, oh, my gosh. I love that. She yeah. tell her she gets an A plus. Like, I will just... tell her she gets an A plus. <laughs> um, and touch wood, I didn't have to use that. But um, it did make me realize that, you know, all this time that I nag and I nag and I nag. And she says, you know, get me a red. We, we have her casket picked out. I know what she wants. Right. That she's actually hearing me. And I think that was actually the biggest lesson for me is. Mm -hmm. When push comes to shove, if you keep saying that you want it and you keep yeah. saying that she knew that she could come to me. Yeah. She knew not only she could do that and she had the strength to write these letters and to do it, but also that I would be receptive. Oh, my gosh. Wow. And I think that's – look, I'm a new mom. The idea of death hits me in a whole new way. Oh, I know. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> oh my god, no. I mean, it does. It it definitely puts so many things in perspective. It makes you so vulnerable. You have these kids that you love. I mean, to quote still Magnolia's more than your luggage. I mean, you love them. That's a great movie about death, by the way. That's yeah. Yeah. Um, but you do and it you don't ever want to be apart from them, but it it definitely puts things in a whole new light. Right. So it, it did, you know, after seeing these baggies and my mom's, you know, coming around, I went and created my will. And yeah. it's horrible. It's painful. Yeah. But don't I you feel, feel so much better? So good. I, I know. So good. It's, 
I, you know, and I made those calls and I talked to the people that will be responsible for my daughter. And, you know, I, I thought it through, I thought it through really in such yeah. detail and I feel so much better about it. I know it is. Oh, and my husband so and I have good. redone ours now twice. We just redid yep. ours this earlier this year. And I feel so much better. We've created a revocable living trust. Mm -hmm. So hopefully our children will, will avoid the hell that is probate. <laughs> um, yep. You know, we, you know, rethought through guardians and who would mm -hmm. take over finances, but it's so, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, I can breathe. Right. If I go off a cliff, I know right. my kids will be taken care of. Right. And it, it's the last thing you want to think about. I had, you know, I honestly, and I know this sounds naive, I thought I'd be okay doing it. I thought I was in some way, I don't want to say immune to it. Because yeah, yeah. I don't think, I think a good funeral director kind of never becomes immune to this. Yeah. Um, but I thought I would be better about it. But actually, yeah. I lost my dad. My husband lost his mom quite young as well. Mm -hmm. And so it's something that plays into our, I don't want to say day to day, but I do believe kind of even subconsciously our day to day activities and the two of us were just disasters. Um, yeah. Like yeah. This. And I think, I actually think it makes us better parents. Yes. Um, is that we are conscious every mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. uh, we of, are. Of knowing and I, I I know I am, and I, I have conversations with him, and he is as well, of, of really thinking through each day and truly being yeah. grateful. Yes. For well, and I, I sort of liken it to when you get on an airplane and they teach you how to put on the mask on yourself mm -hmm. before you put it on somebody else. And you're taking care of your stuff first mm -hmm. so that you can take care of others. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I love that quote from Swedish Death Cleaning, you know, why would you expect your family to stop what they're doing, to stop their lives and take care of the stuff that you yeah. didn't take care of. I mean, that, that was you completely. Yeah, 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 yeah it was. And um, so, you know, I was so, you know, thankful. Um, you know, my dad died when I was 16 and my mom died, you know, eight years ago. And my mom told me, you know, cause she wanted to be cremated and a couple of things. And that, that was so helpful. I wish she'd done a little bit more with the stuff. The stuff is the, just what throws people over the edge. But um, I had a client last summer, her father died. Um, he did not have a will. The sisters could not agree. Um, one of them said, Hey, dad told me you wanted to be cremated. The other one said, Nope, over, over my dead body. He sat in the morgue for four weeks until the sisters would finally, one of them would sign off to have him cremated. I mean, it was just heartbreaking, absolutely heartbreaking. So write it down, even if it's on a sticky note, on a post-it note. Um, I, I mean, I don't recommend that, but. Um, but something. <laughs> but something. But, but this all led to you co-founding. Farewelling. Farewelling. Yeah. So let's unpack that because I'm so excited to talk so about it. So it was actually, um, when you talk about fate, I was actually about to get married. I was about okay. a month away from my wedding and a event planner reached out to me and I thought, oh, another wedding planner. Yeah. Um, and to be <laughs> You're fair, like, I'm good, but thanks. <laughs> yeah, and to be fair, like, I love my wedding. It was amazing, but I was not Bridezilla. You know, yeah. I just right I wanted funerals I you know yeah and she reached out and she said you know let's talk about work and that was Karen and we had I believe about a four and a half hour cup of coffee oh my gosh um so it was a wedding planner uh meeting with a funeral director who was planning her wedding wanting to talk right. about the funeral industry you know <laughs> um and it was like just meant to be we I have always kind of had the idea of farewelling in the back of my mind but couldn't formulate exactly what it would be and right. Karen just is a, a whirlwind and came she in is. And was like, yes 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 <laughs> and I you know she said well let's wait till after the wedding and I was like absolutely not we cannot no. wait this has to get started tomorrow <laughs> I mean <laughs> let's go ahead and do this I mean yeah. I, I you know you sound like a lot like me when I'm when I'm in it it's whole hog or it's nothing like we're going <laughs> going yeah. for it so why yeah. wait 
we were we were having meetings. I mean, I just said I can get married. I know how. Like that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is this is amazing. This and we just got started right away, and it was meant to be. It was perfect, and our whole mission was, you know, as we say, to celebrate a beautiful life beautifully. Mm. And I think that's so telling of what we do, which is yeah. we're not here to dictate what you do. We're not yes. going to tell you. We're not the get your shit in order. Yeah, and yeah. It's we want you to celebrate you. Yes. In whatever form that is. You know, we mm-hmm. now have um, themes for our farewellings and it's everything from you know, a foodie, a sports fan, the avid golfer, you know, the – the whiny person, the wine lover, the, you know, have a mindful gathering, eco-friendly. And I just think what it says is that we're all unique. Yes. Yes. And so why not have a send off that is personalized? Yes. And not, and it's not this one size fits all cookie cutter. You come into the funeral home. Here's your stuff. Thanks for coming. Move on. Right. Yeah. Right. And when I entered the funeral industry for my dad, it was basically what color flowers do you like? Oh, he's yeah. Jewish. We're not doing flowers. And it's like, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> Wait. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, and, you know, I think that's, we're in a time when everything's about personalization. Oh my gosh. Yes. You know, dad was Jewish. Mom was Catholic. Mom needed those flowers. Yes. So I, I think it's just so important to be able to change and to work as weddings it was with weddings you know once you started integrating different religions for weddings that changed Mm -hmm. no longer was it just a service in a temple or church and a reception downstairs right right you know now I had literally at my wedding I had the horror going into the tarantella you know and that's (laughs) yeah hey it it, it works yes Um, yes and I think that that so the whole idea of farewelling is that now we have an online memorial where you can create a really beautiful online memorial. So people who couldn't gather, people who to this day can't necessarily get together, we can share a lot of memories. Um, We also have a toolkit that we're really proud of that is basically everything you need to get, you know, your service completed. So oh, wow. we have a checklist. Okay. Um, we have a budgeter, which will give you, it has estimated range and you can put in. And so you can keep track of what you're spending. Right. Um, and have some idea of the cost of items. Um, it has a timeline. So you can easily move about, but again, suggested timelines that are editable. Um, and is this geared towards the family who has experienced a loss or for, or for the actual person planning their own funeral right. or both? So, so right now it's geared towards someone plan, uh, do it, who has experienced a loss. Right. Okay. However, we will be working towards someone creating their own. And we have farewelling um, downloads that you can plan your own and keep the files yeah um, okay of course uh, you can always fill it out for yourself and right you, you right print out and keep yeah. it um, i want the beach theme with okay. <laughs> <laughs> no but that's see that's the thing is that we also have the themes come with playlists readings uh visual ideas yeah um so the idea is that you know I, you go in and it's overwhelming right and the same way is a wedding is when you're told you can do anything it's actually quite intimidating yeah yeah well and you're in this brain fog of multiple decisions Mm -hmm. you're in one of the hardest times of your life and and you're expected to create from the ground up a Mm -hmm. memorable personalized experience in maybe a couple of days right (laughs) Like, when you say it, it sounds so overwhelming. Yeah. And our idea was to just make it doable. Yeah. And make it beautiful. And yeah. to give well, you and just all to the like tools. plant the seeds for those mm-hmm. and give people some inspiration. Be like, oh, wait a minute. I can't. This is Burger King. I can't have my funeral my way. Like, yes. Yes. Oh, I never even knew I could. 
Right. I'm, and I'm sure there are plenty of people out there that don't even think that they can do that. Right. And it's, you know, we have tips on where you can have services and, yeah. you know, what to do. And I think where I'm just so proud of this is it, it's totally user friendly. Yeah. And it's totally, we give you everything you need. But mm -hmm. at the same time, you can move things around, you can take out, you customize to you, wow. but know that you have something to go on. You know, you have your checklist. We're not going to let you get lost along the way. Yeah. And then if there's ever an issue, you just reach out to us. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, yeah. and this would be a great thing for maybe you to assign to a family member for them to like be keeping track of this and, and so, come to me like, okay, music, food, flowers, you know, all the things, um, so bad pipes, on, you know. Exactly. We <laughs> have on the checklist, you can assign it to someone else. Yeah, yeah. You can click when it's done. If you click when it's done and then there's an issue, it goes right back. You can put it back into not done. Yeah. Um, as we know happens. Yes. Uh, and I think that it, it, I'm so proud of it because to me, it's, I've been in this industry. I've seen it and I've always, you know, helping people was always the drive for me. Yeah. And I feel like when people say, why'd you leave the funeral home? Mm -hmm. I always wanted to help as many people as I could. Yeah. And what I love about this is I know that anyone who downloads this will have an easier experience. Oh my gosh. I love and that. That's what I love is that's far reaching. It's, you know, economical enough that you can do it and right. It and it's not, you know, and there's not a big barrier to entry. And, right. You know, you can, it, it can help. Well, and it's an on-demand tool. It's yeah. something that you can access from anywhere at any time. You know, and, and a loss is unexpected or, um, you know, what have you, mm -hmm. it, it's there. And I think that that is so valuable. Yeah. We um, also have um, listings of curated listings of funeral homes and the top mm -hmm. 50 cities because you know you, you know you google funeral home my location yeah and it's sometimes hard you get not you know not necessarily the best website um, oh yeah yeah so we've and gone ahead and reviewed funeral homes um hopefully I, I love that the, because yeah. there's so many people are living in different towns or moving their parents or mm -hmm. have retired somewhere. I mean, I know when my uncle died, he died pretty unexpectedly a year and a half ago. I never even knew what funeral home to call. So I was just literally going through like the old school yellow pages yeah. looking and I was like, I, I don't, you know, I don't even know. Yeah. So I and most love people that. people don't even know what to ask when they do call. Exactly. You know, yeah. I, I do believe there's more than just the how much. Yes. You know, because you don't necessarily get the clearest answer. No. And some, you know, some people include certain things in the price, some don't, you know. And to actually know the lingo um, is a little complicated. So we've tried to yeah. make it easier that, you know, maybe it, maybe it is budget is all that matters to you and that's totally yeah. fine. Maybe there's other considerations. Mm -hmm. um, so we've tried to make it a little bit easier for people to find funeral homes as well. We've given a list of questions to ask the funeral director. You know, we really try to be your best friend, the funeral director. I love that. I mean, and at a time when someone needs that more than ever. Yeah. Um, so I, I just love what your, your mission and even though we're going about it in different ways, you know, our goal is to give families the space to grieve mm -hmm. by taking tasks off their plate, shortening the processes, being their advocate, sort of spoon feeding them with information so that they don't have to recreate the wheel. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, that's, it's the same as the way. Yeah. yeah. Know. Yes. We, we spend time learning about this. So yeah. when, when you need help, you know, let us fill in. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. so what is next for farewelling? Oh gosh, we're just getting started. I we're, know. Yeah, we're we are having, you know, we're really thrilled with what we've created so far and it's expanding on that. And you know, we just we have so so many steps that we you know, so many exciting things on the mm -hmm. on the burner ready to go. Um but 
trying trying not to burst them out yet. <laughs> I know. I know. It's so I, I feel that way in my business. I'm like, I want to do this. I want to do this. And I want to do this. And I'm like, okay, slow your roll. Let's right. let's do this one step at a time. But it's, yeah. you know, it's so hard when you're so jazzed and energized and inspired to do something and expire to, to help as many people as possible. It's hard not to just go, you know, a thousand miles an hour. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. So today I actually recorded my farewelling five. I'm excited. And, <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to leave that for a surprise for everybody. But have you recorded your farewelling five? So truth be told, I did. Okay. And I have to be honest, I did it, I think, about two weeks ago. So it's taken me over a year to do it. Okay. And I resisted, which I find really interesting, is I think funeral directors are really bad about planning for themselves. Mm -hmm. And I did it. I filmed it. I sent it in. And I think I called Karen about 20 times with, oops, I really actually want to change something. (laughs) And she said, you know, you'll do a second one. It's fine. It's <laughs> fine. But exactly. I, I think what's really interesting is when you sit down. I mean, I can't wait to hear yours, obviously. <laughs> um, but I, I, every time I watch someone else's, I was just watching them. Um, well, wait a minute. Let's tell, for those people who are just joining us, let's tell them yeah. what the My Farewelling Five is. So My Farewelling Five is the five things that you want at your funeral. Five things that are really important for you. It can be anything from, you know, I want an eco-friendly funeral right. to I want this exact reading at a funeral to I want champagne um, or all alcohol. Or, um, <laughs> Only alcohol. Right. Or, yeah. <laughs> right. um, so, yes, I did mine. It will come out. Um, and I, the part I left out that I regret and I kind of went back to Karen is I really want it. I don't think I stressed enough how important it is for me to have people say to the person next to them, you know, or someone that matters to them, call the top five people in your life and say, thank you. I love you. And that's the part that I left out that I think would be really important is the calling that person, whether it's out of the blue or the person you tell you love every day. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I've become that sentimental person. You know, I was always that very cold you know I'm okay I'm cool don't come too close yes yes and now I'm like I love you I love you <laughs> people are like oh my gosh what is are you dying <laughs> yes. um, I think it's so important and so I wow. wish that that's sort of the one that I didn't add to my farewelling that I wish I, I had I love that and I actually saw a post on Instagram today it said why don't we say the things at birthday parties that we say at funerals that's right And I was like, oh my gosh, let's, you know what, let's start doing that. That is such a great point. Yeah. I want to see that. Send that to me. Um, Yes, I will. That's that's exactly it is I would love to know that when I leave, it's inspirational to others to take that moment, learn that lesson, realize that it's finite and to appreciate each minute. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, I am, I am obsessed with what you and Karen are doing and I just love my farewelling and I'm just so excited as I know you're just getting started. So I'm so excited to see what's on the horizon and how we can run alongside each other to, you know, to help people experience grief differently and better yep. um and just you know make it make it better if possible absolutely um, we're big fans of yours obviously. oh my like, gosh yeah. well you know, you're our hero <laughs> one of our heroes <laughs> yes exactly yes. i'm um that i'm going to be highlighted i think in an upcoming yes post or something mm-hmm. um so stay tuned for that but our my final mm-hmm. question is so you mentioned you've visited 50 countries and that you have visited many cemeteries. Yes. Are there is there any one cemetery that just stands out as just Moscow? Moscow. Okay. 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 Yeah. So my favorite cemetery, um, obviously, uh, Highgate in London is lovely, um, and Paris has 
phenomenal cemeteries, but the kind of weird one that I'm obsessed with is in Moscow. Okay. And I've been a couple of times. I almost, my husband almost proposed in the cemetery <laughs> because I'm so obsessed with it that he couldn't bring himself to do it. Uh, but yeah, I, I think what kind of took me off guard was, you know, we always have different visions of what we picture, you know, Russian cemetery to look like or right. any anywhere other than our own. Um, and they have a lot of statues and representations of who they were. Mm -hmm. And so they're beautiful flags. And, you know, for a pilot, there's an airplane statue and a piano. And I just, I love the personalization and the care that goes into the the it's not even they're not even headstones um they're sculptures yeah, yeah. Uh, and I also really appreciate that every time I go I, I think I've been two or three times it's they're crowded people go to visit and I was in um I was in Latvia and I had a tour guide and I said can you can you tell me where how you get to the cemetery and she said well, well let's take this train together and then let's oh, take wow. let's walk here together all of a sudden, she's at the cemetery with me. And I said to her, you know, you really didn't have to go. She goes, no, no, I come here every week, so I might as well come with you. Oh, my gosh. And that was so amazing to me was it's not a very – part of our culture isn't going to the cemeteries every, every it's week. It's not, yeah. And it so struck me that this was – you know, she's an elderly lady, and it was mm -hmm. a trek for her to take multiple trains and, you know, cab, what, what yeah. Whatnot. And this was what she did, you know, and she went and I asked who she was visiting and it was, um, yes, it was her parents, but it was also her brother's wife um, and, and certain distant family members. And just mm -hmm. part of her day was you know, not an easy trip. It wasn't her getting into a car or taxi. Right. It was the multiple, the train to the bus. And, you know, I followed along with her. And that was one of the more memorable ones because of that. Yeah, because it was such a cultural thing. Yeah. You're right, we don't. So that is so mm -hmm. just heartwarming to hear that. And that mm -hmm. she just took you along with you. It was like, you know what? We're going to go together. Yeah, that. and we went to go see her, you know, her in-laws. And she was proud to show them to me and to tell me stories and to keep their memory alive. I really like that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That is so special. I know that's yeah. something you'll yeah. never forget. No, I loved it. It was very special. I keep it dear. Very sweet. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. I cannot thank you enough for well, joining me tonight. And how can people learn more about Farewelling? MyFarewelling.com. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, here we are on Instagram. Yeah. Um, we are, we're, we're on LinkedIn. Find mm -hmm. us. Email us. Reach out to us on chat. Um, we're there. We are on the other side of that box. So, and we love, we love talk. We love talking to everyone. We love yes. helping you in any way we can. So absolutely reach out with any questions, comments, Perfect. anything we can do. Toolkits, re lists yeah. of resources. You go yeah. there. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so thank much. You. I look forward yeah. to future collaboration and Absolutely. you give that little redheaded little girl a, a kiss. I will. <laughs> I will. I will. And I can't wait to see your farewell in five. I know. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. Right. Have a All great right. night. Thank you everybody. Thanks for joining us. Good night. Bye.